Welcome to beautiful Vienna, Austria's great capital and largest city. This year, Vital Options International took on its sixth year of the on-site coverage of the signature gathering, the essential ESMO ECHO Congress. The European Cancer Congress combined the efforts of the most important European oncology professionals with the aim of improving the prevention, diagnosis, treatment, and care of cancer patients. I would like to pick up on the point what, what Vlad said, that this is about doing something mm. and about actually he's actually using one mm. of the tools that you created. Mm -hmm. So it's an advocacy mm -hmm. tool and it's a very, mm -hmm. you said it was a very powerful one mm -hmm. because uh, this is something even a, a government will have to respect the WHO. Mm -hmm. So someone put here down, in the country next to me, they have a drug, I don't have it. And that for me is uh, something that we as advocates actually do quite often, that we compare the situation in our country with something uh, to, to the situation in a similar socioeconomic setting and say they have it, we don't. Do you have other ideas how we can, for example, use your data or your work for our advocacy concretely? And ideally, we would like to have contacts, data mm -hmm. sources mm -hmm. to get going. Any ideas? So in, in terms of what, <coughs> of what exists um, and what you can use, so we have it online, and you can, you can have it online, um, the resources showing you and, and I think we can even work on providing even better tools, um, maybe focusing on each individual country uh, uh, situation. Where we took the WHO list, we can take the WHO list and look at each individual country, what is accessible or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can, you can have uh, the Europe overview, and then you can have your, your con specific country uh, situation and go with both and, and show, look, um, and, the, and we are not mm -hmm. talking about expensive drugs, we are talking about drugs that cost 5 euros, 10 euros or something. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a, a, a possibility to... Okay. To and something that we actually just talked about uh, earlier on, Vlad, what you said, what you thought was essential to get going, to really be effective. Do you want to elaborate on that? Well, we at the CPC, we are thinking about uh, establishing a, an, an online platform uh, where patients might, might uh, report cancer drugs. Of course, this is not ideal. Of course, this is not perfect. And of course, you should have some, 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 some control of it. Uh, there the, but the, I think it's, it's essential to have mm -hmm. on, um, on, on national level, but maybe also on an international level, at the European level maybe, for the essential cancer drugs, for the priority one, two, maybe for the essential cancer drug list of the WHO, to have some sort of monitoring, as I said earlier, to uh, establish maybe within the commission, maybe within, maybe within, uh, within what EMMA. What do you think? Maybe you should have it. <laughs> Like adverse event reporting, I mean, we're able to do yeah. it, maybe. It would be difficult on a global scale. Yeah. Maybe we had a very good report uh, published in April about the use of essential medicine. It's on our website, and if you need this uh, inside, it's, uh, it's easy to find. About the criteria and, and about the changes essential medicines can catalyze. It's not only about... Uh, procurement. It's about pricing, it's yeah. about uh, developing uh, st national standards. So it's catalyzing all a series of, of, of actions and reactions of governmental decisions which, uh, which we need to, uh, we would be needed to be monitored. It's quite complicated. But of course you are right, we, we need to be more on, on, on uh, we need to invest more in the monitoring and colleague has wanted to come in. He's a WHO expert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I have been on that committee, <laughs> Andrew, you're right. Mm. But I just want to point out something. For a moment, let's get out of Europe. Mm. Let's have yeah. a look at yeah. a bigger have not. Yeah. Let's get into a region from where I come, India, mm. and talk like something about the sub-Saharan countries. Mm. But before I get into it, let me tell you, the essential list shows the availability of the drug that should be there in the country. But there are other two A's, the affordable and accessible. Mm -hmm. Those become an important issue. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would really like an answer to this, Andre, Dr. Mm -hmm. Andre, from you. And what I want to really point out to you and also show it, Dr. Fatima, this might interest you because I'm going to give you some hard statistics of a HER2 positivity and essential list. Let me just try and tell you that 
in India, before the generic curse trastuzumab came in, when the prices of trastuzumab from Roche was not dropped, there was just 1,600 patients who took trastuzumab in India. But the requirement was there for 29,000 patients. Mm -hmm. That's the numbers that we have keeping in mind what is the percentage. I'm not getting into those details. When Roche dropped the price down, it went up to 4,000. When we had the generic come in, we saw that suddenly it has jumped to 14,000. But still remember 50,000 have not been covered by the essential drug. Now, to both of you, the statement is going to be that the non-communicable disease asks for 80% coverage of 80% available medication mm -hmm. for the general population of the world, which is the aim. Do we really achieve it this way? That's the first question. <laughs> the second question that I'm going to really ask you, I am just back from a W committee meeting, in fact. Mm -hmm. I was there on Monday and Tuesday, and let me tell you, I was surprised to hear there are not one, but there are six countries in the sub-Saharan who don't have a radiotherapy machine. So if you do a breast surgery for a patient who requires mm -hmm. Trastuzumab, but you can't give radiotherapy, but you give trastuzumab. Mm -hmm. You spend money with no gains. So the advocacy has to be in the right format of trying to fight what you want to deserve. The last statement that I'm going to really make is an important one. Certain countries have an issue of drug running across their border. Yeah. That becomes a major problem for between, for example, I know my next door neighbor, Bangladesh, doesn't have most drugs that it can, but I can send it across to India. I try that, I'm going to have problems at the border. So that's going to be a major issue. And last one is, the essential drug list and Monodono's example of CMF was excellent. Fatima, but let me ask, just tell you one thing. Oral endoxin tablets, oral me and injection methotrexate and 5-FUs very often vanish off the shelf. They stop manufacturing. And that's just not in India, let me tell you. It happens in USA. So the word of availability, affordability, and accessibility becomes very important to see. All the statement is, and it just made on one thing. We saw a successful method of advocacy. So, so come to your question, please. I've given him all question. the three questions, and I'm going to give him one solution. And that solution is, we need to do something like hepat hepatitis C did for the new drug for gliadol did. If we can do that, I think, says WH as a lead, might be a much better method. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Well, I, I don't have the solution for everything, for, mm. of course, right? <laughs> but I, I, would, I would like to call your attention to something we discussed previously that I think it has to be on your minds as advocates when you go back home, is that, of course, we need to keep fighting for the new drugs, the targeted drugs, the drugs that are uh, the new ones. But what we are seeing <coughs> and what um, Vlan is, is, is showing we are seeing a shortage of not expensive drugs because many factors there. First, they are not giving any profit. So pharma doesn't want to produce. But even when pharma is producing, because they have, you know, governments arrange, they say, okay, you can sell this more expensive mm -hmm. drug if you keep um, uh, producing the not expensive one. What happens is that they don't want to distribute it. And so, for example, in Portugal, we were without, it's not even a cancer drug, but it's indispensable for cancer patients. It's a steroid called dexamethasone. It's indispensable to treat brain metastasis, okay? We were without it for one year because they di diverted all this dexamethasone to Germany because in Germany they pay five times more because dexamethasone is only a few cents. So uh, this problem, what I, what I think could be a solution, but this can only happen if all of us get together, but it's not even enough, the advocates. We, somehow we need to go to the general population. I think these unexpensive, unexpensive mm. drugs must be produced by the governments. And you know, it wouldn't be difficult if there will be one factory in Europe and all the member states would put money for that. And that factory could produce the medicines that are essential for all cancer patients in Europe. And the same can be done in, uh, in other countries. You know how the US sorted the problem 
of one, one drug called Calix, that it's a liposomal anthracycline, very, very important to treat ovarian cancer. There was only one factory in the world producing it, and that factory closed. So, yeah, so we had no Calix for three years until they made an arrangement in India and they start mm -hmm. producing the drug. Mm -hmm. So this brings, you know, there are so many solutions that you just have to break the barriers and, and think outside the box mm -hmm. because it's good for India economy, it's good for cancer patients, and it's all for sort a shortage.